Hello! In this video I will show the game, the last game of the Budapest Spring Festival, the Open Hungarian Championship, which I played with against Tris Kartik, an Indian player, young gentleman, who I think around like I think 17 years old. And one of he got into the news when he was I think just 11 years old when he played the game and won against the uh, Turkish Grandmaster. So let's see what happened in our game. So I played with the black pieces. He started with e4, I played c5, Sicilian defense. Yeah, before the game I had three and a half points out of eight, so yeah, I wanted to win the game because that would mean I made the expected score, which was like the performance which uh, my rating would require to keep the same level. So I played c5 to play a sharp game. That was my plan. He played knight c3, so it's a little bit a close Sicilian, a, a more solid one. Probably he was maybe happy with the draw, or he wanted to win with a, a solid way. Bishop b5. Okay, now white wants to capture by creating double pawns and then probably like f4, knight f3, make, make an attack. I play knight d4 to save my knight. Knight f3, g6, just developing the bishop. Knight takes d4, c takes d4, knight e2, attacking the pawn. Bishop g7 to protect it, c3. A6. Yeah, I wanted to probably win some time to develop my bishop. Bishop a4, b5, bishop c2. Now I need to do something with the d4 pawn, so I captured on c3. d takes c3. Yeah, and this was the first critical moment. How to continue the development? Actually, also what to do with the center, because he plans to build up a strong center. So I didn't want to wait for it to build up. I played d5, immediately challenging. This is actually typical, this move in the Sicilian, the Alapin variation of the Sicilian, when white plays c3, like to play d5, because takes, takes, and there is no, the knight normally, which is on b1, cannot go to c3 to attack the queen. Okay, so d4, so white, wanted to gain space and block the g7 bishop with e5, so I capture the pawn. Example if I would play just knight f6, then you know e5, this knight d7, h4, with the height of h5, I think white has really serious attacking chances. So I just capture the pawn, bishop takes, rook b8, my rook was hanging, a4, Knight f6, developing the knight, attacking the bishop, bishop c6, check, bishop d7, takes on b5, recapturing, and then back. So it was a smart idea actually from here, he did not go back immediately, because then I could exchange the bishop with bishop b7, but first forced my bishop to d7 and then went back, so now I can much harder for me to offer the exchange of the bishops. Because actually this bishop is pretty pretty strong, attacking many important squares in my camp, so I would be happy to exchange that. Okay, I continue development, castling, bishop f4, yeah, look, those bishops are wow. Those are the power of the bishop pair. I played rook c8, actually rook b6 was also an option. Queen b3, queen b6, both developed, castling. Yeah, and here was a question how to go forward. I was thinking maybe rook c4 or e6. Because, yeah, c3 is the target, but it's pr pretty well def defended. I cannot do too much. Also, I wanted to to play for a win, so I wanted to prevent also exchanges. I played bishop c6. Actually, this bishop I was really happy to exchange and then play not, something like knight d5 to attack the pawn. But it's also kind of a provocative move provocated d5. So now this pawn can be a target later, plus also opened up the diagonal, so c3. Of course, it's also has some minuses, because now red, white is red playing something like knight d4, knight c6. 
Okay, here he played h3 actually, preventing this knight g4 idea to open up. Okay, now I played rook c4, so I just continue to develop and I try to, I want to develop actually the other rook to c8 to increase the pressure. Now queen a3, attacked my pawn on e7. Yeah, again, uh, time to think what to do. Actually, for, I was seeing also this b4 just to block the king. Queen takes, rook takes, and this is probably also fine, but yeah, it changed pawns, so it's less chance for a win. I wanted to keep the pawns, so I wanted to, instead of exchanging, I wanted to win the c3 pawn, actually. Okay, so rook to e8 to defend this one, queen a7. Yeah, now not too much I can do against the exchange of queens. Yeah, queen d8 was an option, but it just looked really strange to go back to the starting position. So I captured, captured back. And I played bishop f5, my kind of first attacking move in the game, or first active move. The idea is bishop d3, actually. Attack the knight and then, then the, try to win the pawn. Okay, here probably he should just play something like rook d1. And this would be a probably, again, an equal game. But he played knight d4, that aggressive move, attacking the pawn and the bishop in the same time. But here I had a nice move, so nice, simple move, but a good move. Yeah, if you want to find them, please stop the video. Okay, so b4, the move is b4, undermine the defense of the knight, because the knight defended by the c3 power, so I want to exchange it. Okay, here he played his only move. Yeah, if you want, yeah, please find it. So stop the video and find what's the, really the only good move for white here. Bishop e2 actually attacking the rook, forcing the capture of c3, and again a strong move for white. Bishop b5, activating the bishop. So from c3, which was kind of blocked, you get some really active spot. Okay, now captured. And so defending the power from the other side is of f3, so it's a pretty active spot for the bishop. and. And white is okay here. Black has an extra pawn, but white's strong bishops are okay to make the draw, actually, or close to equal. Actually, instead of this one, even there was a better move. I later analyzed d6, really aggressive move. Idea to activate this dark square bishop and attacking the pawn. And b6. Now, really, really, really interesting the situation. Actually, Try to find the way for white to win the exchange. Actually, white can win the exchange here. You take your time, it can take maybe a few minutes. Bishop a6, the rook should go. And again, now uh, maybe take your time. Maybe stop the video and find how can white play here. How can white win the exchange? Bishop b4, wow, look. The rook looks like kind of like, you know, very many squares, but actually all the squares, <laughs> every square controls, so, so interesting. A little bit similar like in my previous game when my queen could be trapped in the middle of the board. This is a little bit similar thing. Probably rook c2, takes, takes. This is still equal because this is very strong pawn, so a pawn and the knight that uh, makes uh, the equal possible. But yeah, so that was that was better than the knight takes f5. This was played takes king f8. Yeah, this was again not the best move, but I was actually also kind of low on time, and it felt safe. Probably the object here, probably the best one is to keep the activity. Play something like rook c4. So give up actually the pawns, attack the bishop. And instead going forward with the pawn. So not not take care of that e7. You know, yeah again. 
reposition that one and the knight can be repositioned to some nice way yeah now the too many <laughs> pass pawns probably rook g3 but i play the passive king f8 rook b1 attacking the pawn played rook d3 to counter attack should be seven rook d8 Bishop c7, rook e8. Actually, yeah, my rook has still square. Okay, now there's no rook b7 again. Sorry, bishop b7, because I just take the bishop. Yeah, and here came, probably maybe he fought, he's maybe better. I don't know, that's that's a strange thing, what, what he was thinking. Or maybe just one thought like this is a good attacking move. Yeah, the idea is actually rook a8, so it has some sense. Because I can take, then it's a back rank checkmate. So this is a serious threat. Because if I, I play just some strange move, like uh, what whatever, what moves if I do, like uh, let's say like maybe b3, just continue to push the pawn. After this is actually... There's only one beautiful move to save everything, otherwise it's just losing, but this is just an amazing move. So giving up the rook, but now open up, opens up the escape square, and now this very strong b pawn, it's uh, again guarantees equality actually, even down a piece, but it's Actually, black white need to sacrifice the rook for the pawn, and this will be a draw with the exchange up. But again, it's uh, pawn and the bishop is okay for the rook. So let's go back. So after this, actually, there is a strong move for black, which uh, wins the game. So gets uh, some big advantage. Please stop the video and try to find it. Knight takes d5. Actually, it's a counter-attacking move because now he played rook a8. So I cannot save the rook and I cannot take because that's just like a checkmate. It, but I can take the other rook. And rook takes c8 check. Now the g7 o freed. It opened up because of the bishop moved away, and now. Yeah, black has two extra pawns, one of them is a super strong pass pawn, so it's, it's the position is winning. Rook d8, he tried his last chance to attack it, but then with e6 just protected. Bishop d6, yeah, he thinking about maybe some kind of attack. b3, yeah, moved behind. R bishop d4, yeah, I wanted to, before push the pawn, I wanted to make my bishop an, would act with square. Rook b7. Yeah, here I need to calculate because I saw like this is his plan to play bishop e8 and maybe rook takes f7 and there's two bishops and the rook can generate some attack. So I was thinking first if should I go out somehow or but then I realized okay this is this attack is not really dangerous. So like with the check I can get a queen and after capture here. Yeah, please find the, the simplest way to to defend here. Stop the video, find it. King h6. Yeah. One more check with the bishop, but after king g5, actually, he resigned. There is no, no check here on g7, bishop e7, then I just take it. So no more real check. Yeah, with the pawn checks, I can just go forward. And this wins. So, this was the final game of the tournament. I got actually four and a half points out of nine games. I think I tied for place number 88. Played like 210 players. And uh, after the tide break, I was, I think, like 112. So around the same like how I started the tournament. So rating wise, I think I lost like half a point. So that's not really serious. But the important point 
I got really fine positions also against the top players and lost only in long end games. So I started to be so angry of myself why I did not really prepare in the last couple of years. Because if I can play like this without training and preparation, what would happen if I would train? Yeah, so that makes uh, made me feel, okay, I will really start to train now. And I will document also my training in videos. My plan is to every day to study some stuff. Probably in the first couple of weeks or month, I will concentrate on uh, on calculation study. Plus, my idea is actually to go and study from the absolute basics, so review of the absolute basics. There are some courses which I plan to study. One of them is from Noel Schroeder, like he has a course for absolute uh, beginners and also there are some chess mood courses like the Tactics Ninja example. You can find those in the under the video. And then also the from the key learning points I plan to put into a video or some of the examples which I found interesting I will put there. So hopefully you can benefit also from these videos and also have fun so enjoy it but also actually you can put into practice in your own games the ideas which you can learn together. So thank you for watching if you enjoyed the video please subscribe and uh, let's hope very soon probably tomorrow. Bye bye.